Hi guys, Tom Matthews here. Um, I bought one of these uh, Keithley 617 electrometers uh, because I saw it on EEV blog and wow, I thought that's a neat instrument. I'd like to have one of those. The one I bought though uh, will not measure more than two and a half gig ohms and so I decided there's something wrong with it. I think I figured out what's wrong with it uh, and I thought this might be helpful to show other people uh, who are trying to uh, resurrect some of these uh, fabulous instrument. These things can measure uh, more than 250 gig ohms when they work right and, and tear, uh, uh, you know, uh, femto amps of current. Uh, they can even measure, measure charge if you want to. Uh, and they can measure volts with uh, very, very high input impedance. So if you've ever tried to measure volts with 10 mega ohms input impedance and um, and you realize that you know that was loading your circuit down too much this is the kind of instrument you want but uh, look inside this thing um, so the input uh, is on a triaxial uh, BNC connector so this is not a standard connector one thing if you do buy one of these is you'll find you have to buy some expensive uh, uh, connectors and beware that the 617 there's three connectors in here uh, so it's not a normal BNC, but it's also called a two lobe. So it does have the two bayonet lobes like a regular BNC, but be aware also there's three lobe types. So if you go to outfit your setup, uh, it's easy to buy the wrong thing. Fortunately, I didn't do that, but had to be very careful in getting the right stuff. Um, there's a cable still available from Pomona. Uh, here's a cable that I bought for this thing. Um, so for the triaxial setup, you can see what the triax looks like in there. Um, these are a hundred and something dollars, but the, those are available. That's a Pomona 4725, which will work with the Keithley 617. But let me show you what was wrong with this. So these have these very high impedance Kodo relays in there. Uh, the part number is 1240-0197. And the Keithley part number, the house part number from Keithley is RL-70. If you try to find these anywhere, you can't find them anywhere. I even uh, sent an email to Tektronics Parts and, you know, service and they they don't have any more in stock. Uh, you know, long, long obsolete part. But uh, the deal was that these are extremely high impedance. Um, so because you're trying to do tera ohm impedances, you can't have crummy relays on there. So these are uh, glass reed relays inside a magnetic coil. Uh, I think um, I think the glass reed is probably you know vacuum evacuated, and so when they're open circuit, you know you get more than a tera ohm of off state. Uh, I could not find a spec sheet for this particular model, so um, you know I'm not certain what how many tera ohms they were supposed to be, but it's at least one tera ohm. Um, you can. Uh, fine tear ohm relays and I did find I'll show you what I found to replace the one that was bad in here um, but uh, and there's even some advertised as 10 tear ohm and 100 tear ohm uh, but those are special order and I couldn't seem to find any of those anywhere so I'll show you what I'm doing here um, so there was a relay right here uh, that did the zeroing and the way that I diagnosed uh, what was wrong with this, uh, which by the way is very hard because, you know, when you're working with hundreds of giga ohms, um, you really can't put any probes on anything. Uh, so coming up with troubleshooting methods is tricky. But what I was able to do, um, all of these relays are sitting on the main measurement node, so I knew that something in here was leaking. And I uh, lifted the leads for these one at a time and then um, when I wanted to zero it I, with a Teflon rod, I held it down and zeroed it and then I let it go and I was able to deduce that this relay that was here was the one that was leaking. Um, and um, I'll show you how I confirmed what was wrong with it. I don't, you almost need another electrometer to troubleshoot an electrometer um, because I wanted to measure, after I pulled that relay, I wanted to confirm that it was definitely bad. So what I did um, is, uh, you know, in order to measure high impedance, you need to be able to measure, you either need an electrometer or you need to be able to apply a lot of voltage and measure a very tiny current. So I've got a 100 volt DC power supply here and I'm going to run that through. This is the relay that I think is bad. I'm going to run it through there. It's going to come out of here, go into this amp sensitive ammeter. Uh, this is like a five and a half uh, digit Keithley ammeter and then back to the here. 
and then I've also got down here I'm going to check the voltage because I want to know that I'm getting a hundred hundred volts on that now one problem this ammeter needs to be zeroed so with it off I'm going to uh, pull it out I'll zero it out I'll plug it back in we still have zero and then let's put the hundred volts on it so that's going up to a hundred uh, here's our confirmation that we've got a hundred down here on the digital readout let's just give it a little more to make sure it's a hundred okay there's a hundred and so over here I'm getting 230 nanoamps and so that is that's way bad it's uh, that's you know I think one nanoamp at 100 volts um, what, what would that be I mean, it, it's a lot it's you know it's uh, that's probably under a giga ohm uh, very leaky uh, so I'm strongly believe this is the problem if this isn't the problem this is one of many problems because this is unacceptable so I could not find a replacement Mat, exact match, but I did find from Kodo available on DigiKey this 7301 05 1000, and these are guaranteed to be more than a tera ohm. Um, so, I, and it's a 5 volt relay coil. The only problem is that the coil draws uh, more current than this one does. I think it's going to be okay in this circuit because uh, it's driven by a 74HC inverter gate. Um, so, this one. Uh, was like a 600 ohm coil this is 170 ohms uh, so it's probably pushing the limits of what that gate can do but i think it'll be okay and we're going to try it regardless because i don't have any other uh, solution um, but i thought people would want to see these relays as a possible alternative let me put this one on here and let's see uh, what what it's you know this one had 220 nanoamps uh, let me turn the voltage off first because 100 volts is a little dangerous i'm going to wait till it bleeds down there before I touch it um, let's go ahead and disconnect this one um, you probably should handle these carefully you don't want to get too much oil on them because that'll make them leak let me disconnect this guy let's put this one on here the pin out is not exactly the same um, but I think it should be easy to jimmy this into the board um, of course I don't have a cameraman today so let me uh, let me try to do that with a different hand. I may have to set the camera down for a second. Let me set it down for a second. Sorry about that. I need an assistant. Um, so let's put that on there. So this is going to put the 100 volts across it. And then we're going to look for how many nanoamps leak. Um, first, I'm going to make sure this is zero. Let's re-zero that. These do drift a little bit here. Um, and then here's the 100 volts coming up. Okay, we got 100 volts. And notice that this one, this relay has no leak at all. Uh, that flickering zero, let's try it zeroed again. I think that's just the normal zeroing limit. Um, and I'm sure there's better uh, nanoammeters out there, but this one's acceptable for it lets me see that this replacement I'm going to put in here is way better uh, than what was failing in that circuit um, so uh, that's going to be what I'm going to do today uh, I'm going to maybe I'll do a part two to show you the result um, but if you have one of these these are fabulous instrument uh, but uh, in order to maintain the high impedance these things have to be clean uh, but they also uh, if you got one of them that's failing, it can be tricky to troubleshoot it, but it is possible to fix these. And um, good luck with your Keithley 617. Tom Matthews from Matthews Engineering.